Hey, I'm Mayheads, my name is Rage Dead, and I've learned my choices have consequences. If I play The Simpsons Hit and Run, I kill 54 people. Luckily, the consequences to my actions can't have consequences, or else there'd be some huge consequences to the consequences. Damn it. Well, I'll probably be in here for a little while. I actually haven't had my trial yet. There's this whole new law that they're experimenting with where uh, they just throw you in prison before the trial because it's funny. Actually, I don't think that's new at all. Luckily, I have a video prepared about why you shouldn't go murder a bunch of people. And also the crown tumbler sexy man, a flower and a child with a knife. So while I wait here in playing Skull and Bones by Ubisoft, I guess I'll show you the video about not murdering people after I committed a massacre. Maybe you should have waited a little bit. Undertale is an incredible game. It's so good that the internet collectively made a rule online specifically about Undertale. Undertale... Rule 34. What the f That was a skeleton and that was a goat? What the fuck? Here's an accurate representation of what it was like to exist at the same time as Undertale in 2016. I want to die. Undertale is one of my favorite games of all time, for a multitude of reasons. The insane attention to detail, the lovable characters, the fun boss fights, one of the best soundtracks in gaming, and a story that's made me feel human emotions. The flesh suit is peeling. But one of the best things about this game is the way it handles player choice. What you say, who you kill, what you do, what you search on Google, where you hide the bodies from the family of four that you accidentally killed on Halloween night 2014 while drunk driving, but even though the bodies are hidden, you can swear you can hear them moving and sometimes you catch a glimpse of them beckoning to you, calling you into the void. And also, if you choose to buy spider donuts, this game handles choice in a way where your choices have abundantly clear impacts that aren't just smoke and mirrors like they are in so many other games. Ah, the wonders of the Switch case. I don't like Telltale games. Ha ha ha! A nuke is being sent directly to my house. Sure, the stories in Telltale games are fine. Sometimes. But when your games are built off of choices and 99% of the gameplay in them is the choices and then the choices end up not mattering at all, kind of leaves me with a bitter taste. The gameplay in those games just isn't very good, and when the only thing that redeems that gameplay doesn't even matter, it just makes everything I went through pointless. And you may be wondering, how are the choices meaningless? I'll give you an example. Minecraft Story Mode. In chapter 4 of Minecraft Story Mode, you can choose to take armor from Magnus and the other person, I forgot their name and I didn't really want to take it up. Whoever's armor you take will die to the wither storm, which would be a big impact if the other person would ever show up again anyway. It's a meaningless choice, neither of them ever show up again anyway, so it doesn't matter who dies. And sure, maybe Minecraft Story Mode isn't the best example to use for this because it's Minecraft Story Mode, but it's also pretty common with other Telltale games. Some of the choices matter in their games but not many do. And I'm not mad about the fact that the endings are the same. You can make a game that has choices that has one ending. Darkwood did that well. But Telltale games are marketed so heavily as games that change based off the choices you make, but that's never really true. It's just smoke and mirrors. This is the same with a lot of other games, especially Bethesda games for some reason. In games like Skyrim, there are choices that matter, but then you have Starfield where it feels like there's just nothing at all. So why are there so many games marketed as games where your choices define the world and story when that just isn't true? Dollar bill. But then in comes Undertale. Undertale was marketed as a game where you didn't have to kill anyone, but it never outright said, Hey dumbass, your choices matter. Hell, even on the Steam page, that's literally never mentioned. All that's mentioned is that you can talk yourself out of battles instead of fighting. Good life lesson. Whoa, man. Ouch! You... <laughs> you bumped into me. Um, and now I'm gonna kill you or something. You know what? No, I'm not gonna fight you. I'm gonna word you. Nobody likes you. Your wife divorced you. Jared took the kids. Jared is also your high school bully that your wife is now dating. You look like a mix of Shrek and a fucking baboon. Physically, you may have aged since fourth grade, but mentally, your mind is still there. You have an addiction to not showering, and you'll probably die on May 26th, 2032.
But if you've played Undertale, you'll learn that your choices do have an impact. Yes, killing Papyrus will make Sans mad at you, you piece of shit. So your first time playing through the game will probably be a neutral or pacifist route, most likely a neutral because you may not know the extent of your actions. You kill some monsters, and then you meet Sans for the final time in the last corridor as he judges your actions depending on what exactly you've done. And then you beat the game, but the game just kinda ends. So then the game tells you to try again, spare everyone. You do that and the outcome is completely different. You have hours of new content, new interactions with characters, a new area, a new final boss, and a heartbreaking but heartwarming ending. And then the main villain of the whole game, Flowey, tells you to not play the game again and to let Frisk live their life. But he realizes he can't stop you. And out of pure curiosity, you decide to kill everything. Every single monster in the underground, you kill. And the outcome changes again completely. The game feels creepier and more empty. You have no interactions with characters. Most bosses are killed in one hit, except for Undyne. Hell, Sans is killed in one hit, you just can't hit him for most of the fight. And the ending is different. You see, in Fallout 3, you could just nuke Megaton. Wanna know what your father Liam Neeson says? I did can't even compare to such a thing. All those people. You're still my son, and I love you, but I can't begin to tell you how disappointed in you I am. We'll talk more about this when there's time. Right now, we have work to do. Hey, don't worry, kid. You just nuked a settlement with people. I give you a slap on the wrist. Still love you. Please come home. I miss you. Hell, even some of the people from Megaton survive anyway. Now, I'm not saying that Fallout 3 is bad. I think the game's all right. But you can't market your game as this grand choice-based RPG if the choices you make where you literally nuke entire settlements don't fucking matter at all. All. This is how you do choice-based game design wrong. Doing it right would be when you throw a tennis ball, causing a nuke to come hurtling towards you. The way Undertale handles choice is very different. Even small choices can have you missing out on entire gameplay sections. These small choices can also lead to different neutral endings. Like, 8,000 different ones to be exact. Now, neutral endings in Undertale fall into the mostly similar but slightly different trap that a lot of games fall into. But throughout the 800,000 neutral endings, you'll find some standouts. Like doing a genocide run and stopping right after killing Undyne will lead to a call with a character that you wouldn't talk to otherwise in an ending. Killing everything you come across will lead to leaderless endings where the underground is left in a pit of despair. Well, I guess they've always been in a pit of despair, but now it's worse. And then making that choice to just be nice and merciful leads to completely new sections of the game that you would never experience otherwise. And then deciding to make a choice to kill literally everything by walking in circles, putting yourself through... Uh, boredom. Honestly, there's no other way to describe it. Out of curiosity or a feeling that you just have to do it makes the genocide run pure evil. There's evil things to do in other games, but Undertale's evil route is genuinely evil. It can't be discovered by accident. You have to kill literally everything to do it right, meaning you have to go out of your way to see the genocide route through, and the game makes that abundantly clear in multiple ways. First off, the genocide route is fucking boring, but that's the point. The main gameplay loop revolves around walking in circles, waiting for encounters, fighting them, and then repeating that over and over and over again. This is done by design to try to bore you out of playing the game. To stop you. Second off, you have to fight two of the hardest bosses in the entire game. They're also the best bosses, but you may have the urge to go to multiple rehab centers after committing various federal crimes. Third, after the genocide ending, if you relaunch the game, Kara basically says, Hey, asshole, you did this. Why would I bring back the world you destroyed? And finally, literally everything fun is gone. No puzzles, no NPCs, most bosses are just one hits. It's just empty. In other games, you can throw boiling water on yourself and be fine. In Undertale, My skin is melting. But something I haven't mentioned yet is how even the choice of resetting your game has an impact. Resetting the game doesn't really change the story, but there are things that do change, especially with two characters. Imagine if you killed Toriel and you found out later that you just felt terrible, so you decide to reset the game without expecting much of it. But then, Flowey has different opening dialogue. He remembers you. And then if you try to talk to Toriel during your fight, the game acknowledges that you've killed her before. 
And if you go through with sparing her, Flowey's dialogue is different again. He knows that you killed her and then went back. And if you do the opposite and spare her first and then kill her, the dialogue changes again. And killing her multiple times would result in different dialogue as well. Hell, killing Flowey in a neutral route would skip his entire judgment section in the ruins. You would barely interact with him until the end of the game. And in some cases, his Omega Flowey fight won't even happen because he knows the souls will work against him. Your choice to keep playing the game in a way that you were told won't give you a good ending can completely skip major things that happen in the game. Flowey isn't the only character with this knowledge, though. Another example is... Asgore. What about Sans Undertale? What the fuck? If you die to Asgore, you can talk to him during his fight and tell him that he's killed you before, and he knows. Other characters have a sense of deja vu in a way, but Asgore is one of the few that clearly knows. And then, yeah, fine, Sans. The mascot of at least 5,000 strange Undertale artworks on Tumblr. He probably remembers those. So do those artists. Never walk in a corridor that has the color golden in it, or more than two windows. Maybe Sans will think it's funny, actually. The, I, I don't fucking know. But Sans remembers the things you've done as well. Well, he doesn't remember your choices as well in subsequent playthroughs. He does remember your resets and your deaths. Hey, uh, you look frustrated about something. Guess I'm pretty good at my job, eh? And dying to him after sparing him will result in different dialogue before his second phase. And hell, Sans remembers the times you've killed him. And while it's not clear that he fully remembers judging you previously, doing subsequent pacifist runs and getting to his judgement will lead to different dialogue that eventually leads to the room behind his and Papyrus' house in Snowden. Though I don't know if he remembers fighting Gygus or not, I'll have to ask MatPat about that one. Point is, Sans remembers what you've done to an extent, and is very willing to tell you, Hey dumbass, I've killed you 50 times already, you fucking idiot. I don't like you. Hey! I don't like you. What the fuck? But I guess a major reason of me making this video is to hopefully push a message forward that making a choice-based game with the illusion of choice isn't really the right call. The majority of Undertale was made by one person, Toby Fox, with some help from others like Temi. If it does choice better than most AAA games that even attempt choice-based mechanics or some sort of portrayal of morality. Undertale is really a byproduct of not being lazy with your game. Obviously not every single game needs to have choices that impact the world and story, but if you make a game that has choices as a major feature and you advertise your game as a choice-based experience where everything you do has consequences and then in your game you can just nuke all of Florida and nothing happens. All of Florida has been nuked. Oh my god, finally. Now we can get back to what really matters. Mr. President? Yeah. Uh, yeah, all the people in Florida survived the nuke. Oh, yeah. Okay, right. Fuck! It just doesn't sit right with me! It just feels like those games have that illusion of choice as a marketing scheme to get more eyes on the game and sell more copies, rather than actually implementing proper choice based mechanics. It also just feels lazy, like they implemented choices, but were too lazy to make your choices change the game in some way. Obviously not every game is like this, like Baldur's Gate 3 is a good example. You can tell a troll that you are the new troll and the troll has to pay you and then the troll will just dissolve. And there's the entire immersive sim genre, which having what you do have some sort of impact is a pretty major aspect of a lot of immersive sims. Not all, because not all of them are supposed to be choice based, but then there are some that follow the more choice based route of immersive sims where the things that you do actually do have impact. But so many games do implement that illusion of choice, and when most of your gameplay revolves around those choices, and the choices just don't matter, that doesn't make the game good in my eyes. I don't care how renowned the dev is, if they make gameplay that is all about these choices that you make, but the choices don't even matter, everything that you go through just doesn't matter. It's not a good game, in my eyes. It just really isn't Telltale. Telltale! The way choices work in Undertale makes the game strangely realistic. Like Genocide. Personally not a huge fan of that thing. Uh, as a certified serial killer, that's a little too much for me. So if I was in an area where a tiny child with a knife was killing just literally everyone, I'd probably leave. 
Also, how does that happen? How does a tiny child overpower a literal monster? At the end of the day, Undertale is one of the greatest games of all time, in my opinion. And the way it makes you feel after the choices you make is really like none other to me. I can think of maybe one game that makes me feel so affected by the choices that I make, and that game would be Papers, Please, which is another great example of how to do choice right. That entire game is a test of your morality, your ethics, and it does choice perfectly. I mean, the choices you make in that game do matter. You, The entire storylines of people, could, it, uh, that doesn't make sense, but people's entire storylines can just be cut off because you send them back to wherever country they came from and they're wanted there or maybe they're not wanted but someone is after them there and they die and you never see them ever again but the weight behind every action you do in undertale just feels real the neutral route is basically the normal way to play the game then you get told that there's a better ending to get so you get it and these characters you love get a happy ending except for one but then out of curiosity you just have the feeling like you have to see what happens next and just because you can, you do, and you kill everything. And the game makes you feel like an ass. Oh, hey, is the video done? Yeah, I've just been kind of sitting here. There's like a riot going on right now, and people are killing each other. But um, I'm kind of lazy, and I don't really feel like joining in. Hi, Rengenade. I'm going to burn down your prison. Yeah, whatever, Renegade. Uh... Your trial's like about to happen. You want to go? No. Oh, okay. Ow. This isn't Wendy's. No, this is a Wendy's. Oh yeah, makes sense. Well, I let let, let this be a lesson to everyone watching. I guess don't do weed. Oh wait, no, that's not why I'm in prison. Uh, oh yeah, right. Don't search up Undertale Rule 34. It's not a rule that you should follow on the internet. There's so much different.